Today's video is going to be about creating animations for our character. Right now, the only animation we really have on our character is him turning back and forth. And it's not really an animation. All we're doing is just flipping the X on our sprite renderer. So let's go ahead and we'll start using Mechanum as well as the animation tool. So I could go ahead and just add an animator component to this character, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and start from scratch. So I'll go into sprites, open it up, uh, let's go players. And we've been using the green one up to now. Let's go ahead and take a look at blue. So I'm going to start off with the walk animation. And we do have a sprite sheet. I'm just going to use the singles for now. And there's 11 of them total. So I'll just go ahead, grab them, drag them in. It's going to ask me where I would like to save this animation. I want to come out to the root folder of my assets. So we'll go ahead and make a new one. And I'm just going to call it animations. And apparently I already have one. But there's nothing in it. So I'm going to create a new one in there and just call it player. And I'll save this one just as the walk animation. And if we go ahead and take a look, there's the player. And we have the walk animation. And we also have the animation controller. And if we go ahead and take a look at the guy we just created, not only does he start off with the sprite renderer, but he also starts off with the animator. And if we look down here, it tells us that we have one clip attached and then some other information. So let's go ahead and take a look at this clip. I have the animation tool already opened up down here. And if you need to open that up, you can come up to the menu, just go to the windows, animation, and we'll also want to open up the animate tour window. This is also what's referred to as mechanism. So here's my animator. Here's my animation. If I go ahead and select the guy that we have animated, we can see his state machine. Now I've already got a series that I've started on Mechanum and you're probably better off to go look at that. Even though right now it's all on the 3D aspect, it works the exact same, but I will cover some of the basics here. And I want to start off with the animation tool. I'm going to go ahead, open this up, make sure he's selected and we can see all 11 frames or sprites that were in that animation. They're put along and it's shown all of the placement along the timeline. If we go ahead and take a look at the scene, I'm going to hit the play button on the animation. Let me zoom in a bit. We can see the little walking steps he takes. Okay. Well, that's great, but I'm also going to need some other animations. I'm going to want an idle animation and a jump animation, and they're pretty easy to make. If I go ahead, select the walk, we can create a new clip. This one I will call idle. And if I come back in, let's take a look. We're doing player two. And he doesn't really seem to have a series of sprites, but we can just go ahead and use one like we have been so far. So we could use this for idle, but I like the one where he's facing the direction that he, he was last moving in. So because of that, I'm going to go back into, well, what's Stan look like? A Stan's not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and use Stan. I was going to go ahead and take one of the frames out of the walk animation, but we'll take this one here. And I'm just going to add the one frame. That's all I need. And let's go ahead and do jump as well, since we're here. And his jump is only one frame as well, which is fine. We'll take that. Great. And of course, since it's just one frame, it does nothing. Basically, the way we're going to work this is if he's not running along the ground, this is the animation he's going to apply. So while he jumps from here to here, he's just going to be in that pose. As soon as he lands, he goes back into, well, if he's moving, his walking animation. If he's not moving, he'll go into idle. So now let's go ahead and open up the animator tool or mechanism. You'll hear me call it both. And notice we have three animations in here now, the three animation clips. I'm going to go ahead and move walk here, my idle here, and my jump there. To move around, you just go ahead, left click them, move them around, drag. You can also use the scroll wheel to go up and down. There is no way to zoom. I wish there was. I'm not going to bother doing anything with the exit today. The only thing I really care about is the entry and the orange one. Now, the orange animation is considered the default animation. So I'm going to go ahead, select the idle, right click, and set as layer default state. That'll make it orange. That means when our game first starts, or this character is first put in the scene, this is the first animation he's going to go into. So let's go ahead, jump back into the scene. I'm going to take the old character, just turn him off for now. Go ahead, hit play. And when the game starts up, he should be in his idle animation. There we go. Was that one idle? I can't remember. 
That's okay. We can come down here and check. What was idle again? Yep, idles with his legs apart. Okay, I was thinking it was jump. Okay, so we'll go ahead. We'll stop that. I'm going to jump back into the animator tool. And I want a way to be able to move from idle to walking. And I also want to be able to stop walking and come back to idle. So if we go ahead and select any of the animations and we right click, we can make a transition to other animations. And likewise, we can go ahead and make a transition back. If we can go to well, any animation clip that we already have there. You can go to exit as well, but we're not gonna be dealing with that today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to idle. And as I've stated, these little arrows are called transitions and we can transition from one animation to the other based on certain actions that are gonna happen in our game. So I'm gonna come over to the side here where we have layers and parameters. I wanna click parameters and this little tiny plus button here, I'm gonna click it. And there's four different types of parameters you can make, the float, the int, the bool, and the trigger. In this video, all I'm gonna work with is the float and the bool for now. And a float value is just any number that has a decimal spot. I'm gonna call this H speed, or horizontal speed, or moving around left and right. And with that done, I'm gonna come back into my scene, and I'm gonna add the character controller script that we've written, and I believe it adds everything we need for it. So character controller simple, or 2D simple, We'll go ahead, we'll drag that on. Let's go ahead, we'll select them. And to get rid of the red, uh, basically that's just saying we're gonna record any changes you make in your parameters. Just go ahead and turn off the record. Now I can go ahead and really start changing stuff. So I'm not gonna do anything in the sprite render. We're just gonna leave it the way it is. I do wanna go ahead and change the up mode, update mode to animate physics. We now have three clips already up. I do have a duck animation for this, so I might actually go ahead and use that as well. I do want to make my capsule collider a little thinner. So I'm just going to go ahead, bring it in on the X a bit. The direction is going to stay vertical. I don't think there's anything I need here. The reason why I've turned this one off is if I do need any values, I can copy them over. Or likewise, like I said, I could have just copied over the animator and dragged the controller in there as well. But I like to start from scratch. And down here, it looks like the only thing I need to sign is the ground trigger. Now, one thing I might have forgot to do when I was playing around with these sprites is to set the pivot point down at the bottom. So I'm gonna grab all my twos. And sure enough, some of the pivot points weren't set right. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them at the bottom because I like them down here in the center. I'll hit apply. It runs off, does its thing. And I'm probably gonna have to do the walks as well. So I'm gonna come in. Select all of these, the point was in the center, I want it at the bottom. We'll go ahead, we'll apply all those as well. And now I'm gonna create that empty, which was his ground trigger. And I'm also gonna rename this player now, but with a capital P. And if we come down to the bottom, we can go ahead, set that ground trigger now. And because I've changed his pivot point, notice the capsules off center and that's fine we can just move it back up on the y and i'm just going to go ahead and select nothing here just to get the capsule set up because i want the capsule right down at the bottom and i want it a little bit lower right about there and i'll go ahead and reassign this now that i can Safely see where my capsule goes. I'm gonna come into my prefabs, go ahead, drag him in so I know that I have a prefab form. And let's go make some edits to that script. I'll open this up in Mono Develop. And the first thing I wanna do is go ahead, make another required field for the animator, even though it's already attached. Just in case I ever wanna put this on another one, I wanna make sure the animator gets put on there. And I also need a reference to it. Put it right underneath this uh, sprite renderer. I'm just going to call it anim, and I'll get a reference to that in my awake. The component we want is the animator. And now that we have a reference to our animator, we can actually go ahead and start passing values into the animator. And right now we have the one parameter set up. So let's go ahead and start passing in our side to side speed into, well, this value here, the H speed. Now, 
You can name it whatever you want. It's just a string. You can even have spaces in there. The only thing that really matters is the spelling. If you spell it differently, it's not going to work. So take note of how you spelt it. Mine's a small h, capital S. So I'll just stick with that. So I'm going to come down into update and see right here where we're grabbing the current speed and we're going ahead, setting it to be equal to the horizontal axis plus max speed. Right here is also where I want to go ahead, go ahead and use the anim dot set float. That float value we want to work with was h speed. And all I want to pass in is the value I'm getting from the axis. I'm probably gonna have to change this a bit because it goes left and right. And I only want to pass in a positive number because remember the change direction is the part that flips it from left to right as far as what, what direction he's facing. So we can go ahead and just get the absolute value here. Maths.abs. And the ABS stands for absolute. I'm gonna go ahead, save that off, jump back into Unity. And take a look at the console here. And we've already fixed that one. So I'm going to go ahead, hit clear, hit play. I guess I should go into the scene view as well. And we forgot to set up the rigid body so that he couldn't flip. <laughs> and away he goes. Well, let's start with that. First off, let's get him positioned somewhere where he's not going to <laughs> fall into oblivion. So I'll put him over here by the spawn point. Come down to the rigid body. We want to make sure that we're freezing the rotation on Z so he doesn't flip over. Let's try that again. So he comes in, he hits the ground, and he's doing some little animation there. We're gonna take a look here. We want to know which one he's doing. And if we take a look here, he's going from his idle to his walk and then back again. It's just a constant loop. Now, why is that? And that's because if we go ahead and take a look at the transition, we don't have any conditions set up, so he just plays infinitely keeps going through them. So let's take a look at that next. Oh, and before we do that, I do want to show that we are affecting the H speed when we go left and right now. And it's always, no matter what direction we go left or right, it's always a value of one as a max. I'm going to go ahead, store that, or sorry, stop that. And I want to take the transition from idle to walk. And there's a couple of things we want to do. I want to turn off has ex exit time. And what that does is when it's going from idle to walk, it plays the full animation before it switches to walk. Now, to be fair, it's only one frame, so it's, you probably wouldn't even notice the difference. But when you have longer animations that are several frames long and you want to transition from that idle to walk, you want to make sure that he starts walking as soon as you push the button. So I'm going to turn that off and then hit the little plus sign to make a condition. Now, since we only have one parameter up here, you'll have to refer to these as variables too. But since we only have one, as soon as we hit that plus button, it shows up here. And of course, we have the drop down. There's no other ones to select. But that's fine, because this is the one we want, right? So when the H value is greater than 0 0.01, I want it to transition to the walk. Then for the walk, I want it to transition back to idle. Again, we'll turn off the hazard exit time, hit the plus button. And this time, we're going to go when the H speed is less than 0 0.01. Now you may have to tweak these values here for your animation, but the general idea is you have some value. When you go greater than it for the input, your character starts moving. When you go less than that, your character stops moving. I'm gonna go ahead, save my scene, switch back into my scene, go ahead, hit play. Now he should drop, there he is. He's in his standing animation. And when we start to walk. Now it doesn't look very good. We might have to tweak the actual animation itself. So we're in idle. Hmm. I think it's the actual walking animation that doesn't look good. Oh, there we go. Oh, I made it to the water in time. And I don't have the ground layer set up, do I? So let's go ahead and we'll fix that right now on him. So the ground layer, I'm gonna select ground and water for now. I really should rename that to layers you can jump on. I just want to quickly look at the walk animation one more time. So the walk animation, I think, just needs to be sped up a bit. But we can play around with tweaking animations later. For now, I want to go ahead and just get the jump set up as well. And as I said before, I want the jump to be playing 
when he's not in the not on the ground or not on a layer that he can jump off of. So for now, I'll just go ahead, add a Boolean parameter, and we'll call it is grounded. Save my scene, jump back into my code. And then right under here, under fixed update, where we go ahead and calculate whether or not our character is grounded, I'm going to call another anim. And this time we're going to go ahead and set a Boolean value. That Boolean value we want to set is, is grounded. And the value I'm going to pass in is, well, what we just calculated here to see if our character is on the ground or not. So I'll go ahead, save that off. Uh, jump back into Unity, and we have to hook it up inside of our animator or mechanism. And the way I want it to work is I don't care what state I'm in. If I'm in any state, I'm going to make a transition to jump. And that whole jump is going to be based off of the fact that I am not grounded. So grounded equals false jump. But I need a way to get out of the jump. So I'm going to right click, make a transition, and I'm just going to go into idle because that's going to be my base state that I go to anything else from. And I want to go ahead and select the transition. Turn off that has exit time and set the condition to be is grounded is equal to true. So let's go ahead, we'll save our scene just in case something goes wrong, hit play. There we go, so we can move and when we jump, he goes into that animation. Of course, when he's being spun around up here, he's in that animation as well. Now when he hits the ground, there's a little bit of a delay and we're gonna fix that. Yeah, when he lands. So let's come into the animator and let's fix that delay when he lands first. So on the transition from jump to idle, I'm gonna open up the settings. I'm gonna turn off fixed duration. I may just be able to shorten it. I'm just gonna turn it off for now. I'm sure there's probably a better way to do it, but this should work. And now when I jump, I come back down. He goes back into is idle right away. There we go. So we've got that fixed. The only thing left to fix is how fast that walk animation plays. I'll go ahead, I'll select that walk animation, and I also want to see it in the inspector. And in order to speed it up, actually, I think I'm just going to go ahead, grab it in the animator, and we can speed it up this way. So let's try twice as fast. I'll go ahead, we'll hit play. I guess we should have went into the scene view too. There we go. That's about the speed I wanted his walk to go at. So there we go, we can now walk. We have a proper idle and we have jump. It might increase his gravity a bit. Let's take a look. Did I have the gravity increased on him? I did. And of course, if I had this guy tuned in the exact way I wanted, I could just come copy the component come over here and then paste it as all well, the values. And I might even want to do that with the collider as well. I just want to quickly check that out, but I think that's it. I've got, there we go. I've got the animations I want. I'm going to need to increase this power. So I'm going to have to copy the rest of the values over. But aside from that, I think I've got the basic animation set up. Like I said, there's going to be more that I want later on. Maybe if I add wall climbing or something like that, I'll want to bring that over, but I've got my basic animation set up and I'm happy with that. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.